Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you how to dominate on Olaf jungle here in preseason 11. He's one of the stronger jungle champions right now, mainly due to the fact that he doesn't have any bad direct jungle matchups. His worst matchups are 51% favored in the enemy's favor, and that's mainly against uh, champions like Nunu, where there's just no real way to kill him and he'll outscale you. Against any melee champion, or against any champion that's uh, squishy enough for you to kill, Olaf is pretty strong. We went ahead and took Ghost this game instead of Flash. Ghost is a little bit better on him, in my opinion, especially if you're going to be pl playing a lot of backline dive. Mordekaiser is not going to ult me because of my R. I can cleanse his R off, and Trindamir is going to R, so most likely you're going to be killing the Vagar or the Ash or the Seraphine. You're going to want to start Q, take Conquer, Triumphant with Alacrity and Last Stand. For second rune, super, super important. Go for Approach Velocity and Free Boots. Just immediately hit it with a Q, then auto attack. Pick up your axe, auto attack Q. Try not to cancel your autos with your axe if possible. It's very easy to do that. We're gonna go ahead and toss it all the way over to our Grom. On Olaf, you're typically gonna go in for a five camp clear. So that way you can still get the Scuttle Crab on time. There's only junglers who can really beat you on Scuttle Crab are uh, Graves and Elise. Everything else is, if you play it properly, you should have the upper hand. So uh, against some more jungle, we should definitely have it there. Whenever your W is up, you're gonna use it for the most part. Lots of attack speed, boost your clear, and you're gonna get some life still as well. The base that attack speed that gives is kind of insane though, to where there's really no reason not to. Against champions, a lot of times, especially if you know you can beat them, based on your HPs, you'll wanna hold on to your W if you use it too early, you'll scare them when they realize how much you're healing. Olaf's one of the uh, few junglers this season who doesn't need Balmy Cinder. And he doesn't need Tiamat to clear his camps. Instead, he can just... Uh, he can just use his Q AoE from his Q. After you've taken your uh, five camps, just push out for Scuttle Crab. Should be able to get there early. And you can set up by doing that. Mordekaiser should have started with his bot side. He hasn't shown up on the map yet. We're going to push straight out for Scuttle. We have one refill left, which is useful for fighting, and we're using one right now to heal. If uh, Mord does a full clear, we'll kill him, potentially in his jungle. If he's doing a semi-clear, then he'll show up on the Scuttle Crab. We're going to push this towards mid. Your E does have more range than your auto attack, so keep that in mind as you're fighting people. Your attacks put your E on the lower cooldown as well, your basic attacks. Did I just hit? I thought that sounded like that hit did Mordekaiser, but I guess it was just the scuttle. Alright, so Mordekaiser might have actually started topside. I'm a little confused. You can go for a dive here. Olaf's dives aren't amazing since he doesn't have a dash, but if they're low enough, it makes sense. Looks like Akali is going to pick up the kill on her own, though. Trindamir is probably going to TP back. I'm going to go ahead and reset. There's Mordekaiser. For our first item, we'll go ahead and just pick up a Ruby Crystal and a Long Sword. And uh, we already have our Oracle Lens as well. Typically going to rush straight into Phage. Then you'll get your Iron Spike Whip, Kindle and Gem, and then Gore Drinker. After Gore Drinker, typically Steric Gauge or Dead Man's Plate. Once again, you don't really need Tiamat on Olaf Jungle. And Mordekaiser did a weird route. He, he passed away from me. He knew he couldn't fight me. It's unfortunate. It looks like he might have actually started on his top side. Just full cleared down. Interesting start. We'll just keep clearing ourselves. We might actually be able to do something bot here after wolves. And uh, leave the rest of our camps. We'll see. Ash hasn't backed yet. There's a good chance they back right here after they shove that wave is my only concern. I don't want to run all the way down there and just have them leave after those two minions. So uh, it looks like she's actually taking her sweet time. In hindsight, I probably could have made that work. She just hit me with her vision as well. So now she knows. I'm going to go make a move on this Olaf. I mean, on this uh, trending where he's playing really far up the lane. The farther up they are, the easier they are to kill. As long as you can come up behind them. That is the goal. We're going to ghost this guy down. 
Keep hitting him with Qs. Keep hitting him with Qs. We're getting movement speed at him. And he's a goner. As long as you land one Q, you'll keep landing the rest because they'll be turbo slowed. Plus, we have our approach velocity. He did a good job hitting you with that backwards grab. He nearly got away because of it. If he took flash instead, he would have probably lived there. On uh, Thanos champions like Olaf and Mord, it's not uncommon to go ghost. It's really useful in team fights. Gives you increased duration for uh, kills and assists. I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and push this out. There we go. Just finish that off, get some XP. And it looks like Kali's going in for a TP play. I'll wait for a Mordekaiser. He's either on Golems or he's just gonna run straight over here. He probably knows I'm over here realistically since I walked through the mid lane turret. But he should come this way after he died. My red buff's coming up here in a second. I mean his red buff. We'll just wait over here for him. He really should be though, because we killed him topside. He's not likely to go top. Oh, actually his blue buff spawning. I'll just take Dragon. I forgot he started at top side. Yellow is 15 seconds or less. That sucks. Oh well. Gray is a 50 seconds or less. We're gonna use our E non-stop. It'll give us more attack speed anyways. Plus weaving it in between our autos is a nice little resetter. Got it. I don't really need that plant. I can get my mana back from the blue buff and then uh, we can use our W to heal as well. E's will come back often with your attack speed, so keep an eye on that. Your E is really nice for the true damage that it gives, especially when you're fighting tanks. They'll get really cocky with their last bit of HP, but your E's a nice little finisher, and if you do kill the target, it refunds the HP cost. I wouldn't worry too much about that though, because it doesn't cost you that much HP. It's just such a small amount that I wouldn't really stress. That's more for laning Olaf to worry about because he can use it as a farm tool versus tough matchups since it has a little bit more range than his autos. Bada boom. Bot lane's looking gankable. Um, I'll, I'll go do something there. I still have my blast cone up. The blast cone's for the gank spawning at like 520. We haven't used it yet, so unless they broke it, it's going to be here. I have my ult as well. It speeds me up for one second when I use it. It makes you immune to CC. I'm going to hit with the Undertow. Nice. Oh, uh, I think I would have actually killed her, honestly. She had nothing left. With uh, an auto attack, one more Undertow, and an E, she was dead. It's unfortunate. We'll go ahead and reset, though. That was a really good time. We'll use our W's attack speed. Uh, if, you, if, if you're about to fight the enemies all into the death, you don't want to waste your W doing something dumb like breaking a ward, but since we have backup, it's fine to use it there to break it in that case. Get the Iron Spike Whip. Keep in mind, we do have free boots. That's why we're not buying boots there. Gore Drinker is typically your best item on Olaf, since with your ultimate, you're going to be in the thick of it on top of them. Whenever you're low on HP in particular, you want to use your Gore Drinker to give you back a lot of HP and really surprise them. And uh, the more people who are close to you when you use it, the more, the more enemies, the better, because it heals you more as well. So it's typically why you're going to be going that on Olaf. He doesn't... He, <laughs> I don't want to say the other mythic items are bad on him, but Gore Drinker is just clearly the best on him in terms of win rate and just overall power it provides in team fights. It's, it's probably not his best solo one. He's going to have better solo mythic items, but... And Olaf in general, you end up team fighting quite a bit on him in the mid mid late game. It, it really does synergize well with his uh, passive, just staying alive for that extra attack speed. So when they get you low, you pop the Gore Drinker and you just non-stop surprise them. We have our Ghost ready. Another cool thing about Ghost is it's much lower on cooldown than Flash by a minute and a half. So if you gank someone with your Ghost and then you burn their Flash, you can come back within the next minute and a half and... Uh, Run him down. This isn't warded. I wonder why he back though. His way of shoving. We're gonna. Ooh, he wasted his spin. And I wasted my undertow. I'm 
I'm just gonna run him down. I think he actually killed himself there. Nah, he's gonna get away. I missed my first undertow. I used it too early. I didn't think he was gonna try to fight me. Got him. What is he thinking, dude? He's high. He thinks Mord's gonna save him. Yeah, Mord's not gonna save you. Mord can't even save himself. Ooh, he even landed his Q on me. It wasn't enough because our W. Mord, when Mord's in his R, he steals a lot of your stats and he gets a lot stronger. So the fact that we could kill Mord there is incredible. He, Mord even red smited me. I don't even have red smite yet. I need to get to Scuttle Crab to smite it. Or just smite that. If she can slow him, then he's dead. I could have baited it out better. I was afraid. I, I didn't realize he didn't have Ignite. Since he didn't have Ignite and he had no Fury up, I should have just fought him. I could have healed off of him really easily. Let's run this guy down. It's that, that pull he's using is really annoying. I'm going to have to run now. I'll use my W here. He's watching me. Oh, I landed it. You better believe I did. Mm, got the kill. He, at least we forced his R. It's not ideal, but we did get the Vagar R. Your Iron Spike Whip is very similar to your E in terms of it has more range than your auto attack. So when you use it, you don't want to cancel your auto with it. So you'll usually auto and as they're falling out of your auto attack range, then you'll use it. It's so like auto, then iron. Spike Whip if you can no longer reach them. You do have to stand still to use it, unfortunately. So just keep that in mind. Against their team, they have a lot of AP. They have triple AP. So we'll just go Merc Treads. Merc Treads are pretty good on Olaf. If you need the magic resist in particular, since your ultimate makes you immune to all forms of CC. If you don't need the magic resist, then I wouldn't bother. Against their team, I'll probably end up getting a Dead Man's to close distance. I can go Dead Man's and Hysterics. Oh, what is this Vagar doing, boy? What are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, Olaf's really annoying for Vagar to deal with. You can run straight through his cage. <laughs> That's his only real uh, escape tool there. Olaf has some interesting counters in that way. You should be able to take down things like Kha'Zix 1v1, particularly early game. Once Kha'Zix gets one or two items, it can get really awkward. But uh, kind of pre-6, like I said, the only champions Olaf really struggles with is uh, a good Graves or a good Elise. Even things like Warwick and Udyr, Olaf has the edge on in 1v1s to the death, which is why you want a 5 camp clear in the Scuttle Crab. That way... Uh, can force out those type of situations. I'll say, Mordekaiser did a great job not doing that. Normally, junglers will start with their bot lane for the better leash, clear up. He started topside and cleared down, which ended up avoiding my clear out in the scuttle. So props to him. He's flashing away. I can go kill Vagar. I got my ghost. I think Vagar knows I'm here. Oh, just not. I have to run him down here in a second. Yeah! <laughs> if they're just going to juke, just run them down. Especially if they have no escape route. We already had them cut off in between the turret. If you throw a Q, it takes time to cast. And it just gives them a much easier escape. It's A lot of times with the Olaf Q, if you already have their escape route cut off, it's better to have the threat of using the Q rather than actually using it. Since people juke themselves to death. They really don't want to get hit by it. And use our W here. We already have a pink word place, but I don't mind putting a deep one. He's actually watching me. Are you kidding me? I would have killed all three of them if she didn't have Hourglass there. As you saw, the Gore Drinker gave me insane healing. Even with Mordekaiser bashing me with his Conqueror, and me getting chewed up by full item ash, I literally would have won that. Even with, listen, even with Seraphine's Ignite, 
cutting my healing in half off of my W and my Gore Drinker, we still almost killed them all. If Seraphine did not have Hourglass, I would have gotten the Triumphant healing from killing her, which would have given me enough time on low HP to kill the Mordekaiser since I'm higher level and with more items. That's so tragic that she had stopwatch there. Oh well, it happens, it happens. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go for uh, Dead Man's here. I'll go Dead Man's into Sterics. I want more movement speed. I'll rush straight into Dragon. Super unfortunate. Dragon's so spicy. Such potential. Nice, just barely. If, Ash, if her bow shield was up, she would have won that. I mean, if her shield bow, her shield bow was on cooldown though. What are you doing? What are you doing? Everyone's a tough guy these days. Everyone wants a piece. Seraphine was feeling real tough. That teenager on a hoverboard, she thought she could do it all there. Little did she know, big man Olaf bringing down the axe. He doesn't care that she can use auto-tune and flap her gums on a hoverboard. He's just there to pillage and row his, uh, <laughs> his longboat down the river into her village. That sounded oddly sexual, but it wasn't supposed to be. Let's try to be more literal. All right. Yeah, you're going to max your E second, W last. It's the plan, Stan. Ooh. Did she actually just do that? She actually just walked up and, and uh, W'd my whole raptor camp. That was pretty rotten of her to do. I did not appreciate that. I think that was very rude. We're warding this whole area up. And yeah, they're feeling really tough, man. We got a bunch of wise guys over here. I'll finally get a chance to... Uh, Put an end to that here. I, th I think this is freaking worded too. They worded every bush over here. We're just gonna path through. Dra dragons are down, heralds are down. So the best thing we can do is just take their camps. Yeah, this is worded too. Damn. They got a lot of wards, man. It's the League of Wards over here. Very nice. I will say our team does fall off. Me, Akali, and uh, Katarina all do fall off quite a bit. Olaf plays best when he has a speed up support like Lulu, Karma, or Yumi. In the same way Hecarim does. I'm not going to be able to kill them. I burnt my ult and flash for very little there. I just can't. I need them to be farther out. We need more distance. If they're both under turret, I, I'm, I'll just take too much damage from the turret, essentially. Even with my Gore Drinker. I'll just keep taking these camps. I'm going to pull it out this way. I think they might pinch. If the enemies do start playing stubborn, just make sure you take every dragon and herald that comes up. Right now, we don't have that option, so we're just going to peel off to the side, keep taking camps, and wait for it. We'll use W to take this faster. They're gonna peel down here to me here in a second. I need to get out of here. We have I have some counter pressure mid. I can come back in. Is this warded? Please don't be warded. It, dude. I swear everything is warded. I have my R. I want Ash to ult me. I want Ash to get in my face and stop hiding under the turret. So left's time to shine. They're playing so far back. <laughs> Where are they? They're actually just hiding. Kali put too much fear in their hearts. We have a fed Akali and a fed Katarina right now. Grab this red buff. Dragon's up in 154. We're on the right path for Dragon Soul. A lot of people ask, how do you carry on Olaf late game? You don't. Uh, you just have to hope you got your team far enough ahead. Or you gotta hope that you get Dragon Soul. If you get Dragon Soul, you're probably gonna win even on the Olaf late game. I think that's GG. Kata and Akali are just forcing kills under turret. That's it. GG, guys. I hope you enjoyed this Olaf Jungle commentary guide. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.